Hello students, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I would like to take a look at a practice problem from chapter 6 and this covers uniform circular motion. So I'm going to read the problem, we're going to underline some important information, we're going to draw a picture and then we'll go step by step on how to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and get started. A 615 kilogram racing car completes one lap every 14.3 seconds around a circular track with a radius of 50 meters. The car moves at a constant speed. So in this question we have part A and part B. Part A says calculate the acceleration of the car and we know that this is going to be the centripetal acceleration identified by A sub C and in part B what force must the track exert on the tires to produce the acceleration? Well, we know this is going to be the friction force between the tires and the road. So here we have F net. We're going to calculate the net force applied to the vehicle. This force is going to cause the car to turn inward or towards the center of the circle. And the agent of this force is the friction force. So force sub friction. Now, if we drew a simple picture here, let's say this is the center of the circle. This is my car. Now, I'll just say that this is a top view, okay? If our circle is there, we're on a circle track, our radius is 50 meters, okay? We first need to calculate the velocity of the car. So the velocity of the car is equal to the object's displacement vector divided by the time period. So the displacement vector, so if the car starts here and the car goes in a complete circle, that's going to be the circumference of the circle identified by capital C. And we're going to divide this by time period, capital T. Now remember that time period is the time it takes for the object to make a complete circle or a complete revolution, okay? So we know that the circumference of a circle is equal to two times pi times the radius of the circle, okay? So what we're gonna do is plug in our radius and our time period. So radius is 50 meters, so I have two times pi times 50 meters, and we're going to divide that by time period, which is 14.3 seconds. Okay, so in my numerator, 50 meters times 2, that gives us 100 meters, 100 meters times pi, this will give us 314, and we're in units of meters. Here, we'll just do that. And then in our denominator, 14.3 seconds. So go ahead and get your calculator out. So 314 divided by 14.3, I get 21.97. So I'm gonna write that down here. 21.97. Now let's take a look at our units. We have meters per second, okay? So velocity is in meters per second, all right? So I'm going to erase this to free up some room here, but here's my velocity that we've calculated. Okay, part A, calculate the acceleration of the car. So the centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. So as this car, so the velocity vector is pointing tangent to the circle here, but our acceleration vector is pointing inward to the center of the circle. Okay, this is known, it's center seeking or centripetal acceleration, okay? So A sub C 
is equal to the velocity squared. So we're going to use our calculated value of 21.97 meters per second. And we're going to square that divided by the radius, which is 50 meters. Now remember that not only are we squaring the numerical value, we're going to square the unit value. So 21.97 squared is 482.68. Now remember we're squaring the units, so meters per second times meters per second is meters squared per second squared. And we're dividing by 50 meters. This gives me 9.65. And let's take a look at the, the units here. So I have in my numerator meters squared per second squared divided by, well, in my denominator, I only have units of meters. And algebraically, we can write that as meters over 1. So whenever we divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the inverse of the denominator. So I have meters squared per second squared times the inverse of the denominator, 1 over meters, okay? So we have one of our meters cancels, leaving us with meters per second squared, okay? So just to free up some room, I'm going to copy my answer up here, and I'm going to erase this. So I have 9.65 meters per second squared. Next, we need to calculate the net force. So we know that if there's a net force applied to an object, there will always be an acceleration. And the net force vector and acceleration vector, they always point in the same direction. So our net force vector points to the center of the circle, the same direction that the acceleration vector points. So the equation that we're going to use is the net force applied to the object is equal to the product of the object's mass and the object's centripetal acceleration. Okay, the mass is given to us in the problem, 615 kilograms. Now we're going to multiply it by the centripetal acceleration that, that the object is experiencing. And we're going to use the calculated value, 9.65 meters per second squared. Okay, so on our calculator, we get 5,000. 934.75. Now let's take a look at the units here. So I have kilograms, which can be written as kilograms over one times meters per second squared. So when I multiply these two fractions, what I get is kilogram meters per second squared, and we know that one kilogram meter per second squared is equal to one Newton. So we have units of Newtons here, okay? Now, remember it's asking what force must the track exert on the tires to produce the acceleration? Well, this is the net force, but the agent of force is the force due to friction, okay? so. The force of friction, and this is between the tires and the track, this is equal to 5,934.75 Newtons. And that is the answer to part B. So I hope, uh, I hope this helps you. And uh, if you have any questions, just give me a call or send me an email. I hope you have a wonderful day.